Hey guys, James here, back with another video, and today I've got a pretty exciting unboxing. This is a kind of three two-in-one unboxings. So you can see I've got a few products here, and they're all by the same company called Army Tech. And the, these guys reached out to me, said, hey, you know, we, we like your channel, we like the way that you guys do videos, so uh, would you mind doing an unboxing and review of this? So this is uh, three different essentially things. So we've got the Uni C2. It's essentially a universal uh, rechargeable charger. Um, you have the Predator Pro, which is a really nice high powered flashlight. And you have these two uh, batteries uh, meant for the flashlights. What I might do is I'll probably combine these uh, two into one. Um, the battery charger will probably do first and then we'll get into the flashlight. Um, but essentially, yeah, this is by Cry uh, Army Tech. Um, I haven't really heard of these guys before, but now, you know, looking at these products and we'll see whether, you know, it's good quality or not. Um, because the prices are pretty competitive. This flashlight cost uh, 100 US flat. This uh, charge is actually quite affordable at 17 US. Um, and these individual batteries um, are $15 each, I think. Not for a pair, but each. Um, but I'll, I'll have to confirm that. But let's get straight into the unboxing and we'll see what we have. So um, obviously uh, these batteries are already unboxed. They, they literally just came like this. Um, so there's not really anything to unbox there. Let's just get into the uh, charger. So. We can see some of the specs here. You can pause that um, if you want to look at all the different uh, features that it comes with. Um, but obviously we're using this to charge the two batteries uh, that they provided. Uh, and you can see uh, this is the supported batteries that it can charge as well. Those are the inputs and stuff that's included, but we'll have a look. So let's get into it. Okay, nothing else in the box. You have typical user manuals. So, uh, so this user manual is pretty important usually. Um, so it tells you what all the different LED indicators mean. Um, we'll get into that soon. You have the uh, charger and some cables. So it comes with two cables. So this is the standard figure eight um, into an EU plug. I think that's what EU, or maybe not EU. Uh, this is a US plug. Um, and you also have this plug, which is for charging in your car, um, which is nice. So you have this slot here, and then this plugs into your uh, car charger, or if you're plugging, charging at home, you plug this in like so. So I fortunately have a uh, Australian uh, a figure eight, so I'll be using that instead of this so we can charge it. But it does come with this cable, roughly about a meter long, and this is probably expanded up to 1.2 meters, um, but standard length, maybe 30, 40 centimeters. This is full plastic design, so it's not that great in terms of quality, um, but it's not too bad either. But let's put this aside, and we'll see the thing itself. So you can see it's, it's got these springs, very noisy as well. Uh, and they uh, automatically fit according to what battery you put. So let's just say we're putting this, uh, it fits all the way in, just like so. We'll put the other one as well. And there you go, pretty easy. So something else to note is that it, this doesn't include rubber feet, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, because you know when you're putting on this type of surface it is going to kind of move around so you would have expected that they would have at least included rubber feet it's funny because they have the holes there but you know there just isn't there but uh, that's that's okay you can easily buy rubber feet just on ebay uh, you just search small rubber uh, 3m feet something like that and you can just stick them on yourself and that's easy easy solved so when we plug it in you can see it goes through this cycle and it ends up with green on the top. So this is kind of like that it's in standby mode and it's waiting to receive something. So you can see this is flickering. That's actually not flickering. That is just uh, the camera picking up that it's flickering. So hope that doesn't put you off. But you can see here at the bottom, this is all the different percentages. Um, so when it's full and it's not flashing, then uh, it's finished. So this arrow sign just means it's flashing. Um, you can see that the middle section the LED will indicate whether it's a nickel methyl hydrite or a lithium ion and it will have the appropriate indicator left and right. So you also have some advanced features where you can hold and change the type of charge current and the battery type as well. 
So, um, for example, I'm just gonna stick this in. This is obviously a nickel method hydrite, if that's how you pronounce it, you can see there, N-I-M-H. So I'm gonna stick this in here. Okay, it's detected that uh, N-I-M-H. This is blinking, uh, it's not just the flickering. And you can see that's the charging indicator. That's a bit strange because I thought I charged these fish. Anyway, uh, let's charge this one now to charge that, to, to say that you can charge both. So it's indicated that it's number two. So lithium ion 4.20 volts, which is wrong. So we are using lithium ion 3.7. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this manually. So, okay, so you have to hold it. There we go, so 3.7 volts is what we want. And there we go. So we can just a long press and then that's the one that we want. Um, so we just leave it in nickel method hydrite and there you go. So this is to properly gauge, you know, what what the proper uh, current and so they can regulate how much charge is left. So as you can see, it's pretty much almost finished charging. Um, there's less than, you know, 75% to go. And so that's how you charge it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let both of these big ones charge. So make sure we go, yep. Yeah, so we've got 3.7 selected. Um, so let it find its status. There we go, it's charging. Oh, this one's all the way to zero, okay. This one's empty, pretty much. Cool, so we'll let this charge and we'll get into the unboxing of the Torchlight. So, you can see here, this is 1570 LED lumens. It is the warm color. There's a more cooler and a more warmer version, so this is the warm. Um, it is a 10 year no hassle warranty. This is the exact model number, so the Cree XP HP35 High LED. Um, it's a premium LED flashlight, new electronics, optics, constructions, and they claim that you can go up to 435 meters, which is a big claim, um, which is pretty awesome. And we're gonna actually, uh, after this unboxing, um, I actually go into a camp after this, so I'm going to test this out and uh, you'll get to see the performance of how bright this thing can actually get and how narrow the beam is. So this is some of the features here. Um, the angle, how many candelas, I'm guessing that's like a, uh, fall off. Um, it doesn't dim, which is good. So as the battery falls off, it doesn't fall off. It just cuts uh, straight away, so which is good. Um, it has a runtime of maximum of 200 days. Interesting. Um, it is waterproof and submergible for 50 meters up to five hours. That's really, really good. Um, if you're going camping, if you're going um, even, I don't know, if you're going exploring, whatever, you can bring this along knowing that you'll be okay. And it's impact resistance up to 30 meters. So if you're you know climbing rocks and stuff like that, should be okay. Um, it uses the 18650 lithium ion battery type. It weighs 135 grams. And those are the dimensions for maximum minimal. Uh, I won't read this out. You can pause this if you want. Um, this is what's included and stuff, yada, yada, yada. Awesome. Let's get into it and see what we have. So that's it, nothing else in the box again. So we get a few accessories and the flashlight itself. All right. So let's look at the accessories first. So we get this flashlight holster. Um, so this is a standard kind of buckle clip uh, using both buckle and Velcro, um, where you can just attach this to your belt. Um, and you have a kind of keychain holder as well, which is nice. Um, and so you can just slot this in. Um, it is not a fully enclosed uh, pouch, unfortunately. Um, however, it is pretty decent material. This is kind of like your higher quality backpack straps um, that you'll find. The Velcro, I probably anticipate, will probably wear off over time, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, but, you know, that is a thing that they give you. Um, I would have preferred maybe a clip like this instead of the Velcro, um, just for the front bit, or maybe a hybrid. You also get uh, this kind of rope keychain. It's not a keychain, but it's like a rope for the torch itself. So you can kind of tie it to your hand um, and that's not going to fall off. That's pretty cool. You also have spare rubber seals, which is great. Uh, a, a, a spare uh, cap for the switch as well as this kind of clip. So we'll see how that fits in with everything. 
User manual, again, very handy to have. So we are looking at the very first one. Um, you can see some of the specs here. I'll pause that onto you. And just putting that aside very quickly, this is the flashlight itself. So you can see it's a complete LED flashlight. Very, very large. Um, great, got a nice, great mirror in there. It is got a glass on the front, as you can see. You can see high intensity um, LED, ultra long distance. You can see this is the Predator Extreme Distance. Um, it does tell you what batteries it does take. Um, obviously use good high quality. Uh, and you can see some of the branding there. If you just unscrew this bottom bit, it also, I think, yeah, comes apart in three parts, essentially. So, so you have this main kind of chamber area. Um, this holds the battery and these are your two contact points. So one on the end and one on the flashlight itself. Um, let's see what this actually, what everything is. So you get the flashlight, obviously. You get the clip, uh, which I'm assuming clips on somewhere. Let's put the clip here. Oh, it's a tough clip. So very tight clip, which is good. Um, it means it's not gonna get lost or loose. Um, I'll probably leave that on there. Um, just a good clip to clip onto things. Um, yeah, I would have thought that it would have been loose, but that's really, really tight. You have two rings, you have a rubber grip, which is already on here. Um, maybe should have put it up closer. It's all right. Uh, lanyard, if you want the lanyard. Okay, let's stick the lanyard on. Why not? Oh, okay, it's by keychain. So there's a little keychain at the end. And so that little keychain goes into that hole. So we're gonna have to attach that. Two spare O-rings, um, spare of button and the holster. Um, so we can install the batteries. So let's grab this battery, which is pretty much charged. We're going to unscrew the end. We're going to insert with the tip forward. And that's it. So it only uses one battery, which is great. So it's great that's, um, that Crytek supplied two. It's great that uh, Army Tech supplied two, so that in case I run out. So the instructions are a little bit confusing, um, but essentially what you do, this is the standard mode. So this is, I won't shine this directly, but this is the standard kind of full bright mode. Then you have a secondary mode where if you twist these two sections, you just twist like that, just kind of like a minor twist, um, you then turn it on, this is one setting, and then the next 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 last setting, and then it goes back. So it kind of cycles between five different settings. Um, you can also momentary press, so you can do that to uh, get someone's attention very quickly. Um, like strobing, uh, you can do that with this uh, torchlight, which is great. I think that's really important. They have all these different things. I'm not exactly sure how to use strobing and all these different types of modes, turbo, main two. It's all a bit confusing to me. Um, I think they could have possibly just even had another switch on it to make it less complex, um, but it is what it is. So let's just quickly add this on, uh, just so you guys can see it on camera. Okay, and then just clipping this end onto here. Now I wouldn't suggest using this clip as kind of like a, a definite, you know, it's going to stay, uh, just because the nature of it, it's quite loose and it's not, it's not high quality. Um, if you really wanted to ensure that you weren't gonna drop it, I'd suggest putting a more higher quality clip on, on either of these as well. Um, so yeah, we're going to uh, take this out. As, as I said, uh, I'm gonna set up on this kind of uh, campsite. It's gonna be a pretty big oval and we'll see just how bright and how far this flashlight can reach. Hey guys, so we're outside and I'm peeking pretty softly just because it's at night and I'm on a campsite. But I don't know if you can see here from the screen, uh, but we are facing an oval. Um, and as you can see, it's pretty dark. 
the screen probably isn't a good representation of what you actually see. The moon is out tonight, um, so you can see the basic structure of the oval. So if you didn't have a light, you'd probably be okay in navigating this oval. Um, however, you don't see any of the details within the you know, tree line. So what I'm gonna do is, this is the night core tip um, that I have. Um, this is its lowest brightness, kind of doesn't do anything. This is medium brightness, kind of adds some light, uh, large, and that's, you know, the normal flat. Um, it does have a super bright, which you can see, but it only kind of gives you light just up to maybe 10, 10 meters in front of you, which is pretty bright enough, you know. But if you wanted to see something ahead, it's not going to give you the detail that this would. So if I was to zoom in there, you're not really going to see um, exactly what, you know, that is, right? Um, but you can see in front of you. So that's that. So uh, we're taking my torch out. Um, I use the pouch just because it's nice and nice and big. Um, so I'm going to take the step. So this has different modes. So this is like a really, really dark mode. Um, this is the second mode. You can't really see much. Third mode, you can see some spotting just in the distance. Um, there's like a hut there. Um, you can't really focus. And then the next one gives it a bit more focus. Um, the next. And that was the brightest. Um, so I'll give you the full brightest now uh, and you can see just how bright this is. So you can see clear definition of that house over there. Uh, it's like an archery range. Um, this has a theoretical uh, view of 300 meters, that's what it claims. But as you can see, clear high ropes course over there. Um, you can see the clear tree line. The video doesn't really do it justice, but this literally lights up the entire oval. You can see the rough spread, it's quite circular. Um, but yeah, it's quite bright, very bright. So, I hope that gives you a rough idea of what the light looks like and that it helps inform your purchase decision of it. It's pretty good, pretty happy that um, I was sent it, definitely can use it for camping um, and I love how it's very spotted. Um, it does have a wide beam and you know it's a bit annoying how you can't um, adjust the, the type of size of it um, quite easily. You have to do this half turn and then you know, you can't adjust the beam wide length as well, um, but it's pretty good, pretty happy with it. All right, so I hope that little demonstration was uh, quite helpful for you guys in, you know, getting a rough idea on what the, act, the light performance is like. Um, this is about three or four weeks later, and um, I kind of took this around also to a camping trip that I went on recently. And I kind of experienced a few things which, um, you know, I didn't really notice initially when I was using it. So first off is the battery life. So one of the things which I wrongly assumed was that this battery would last, you know, quite a few hours on the fullest brightness. That's incorrect. It's even listed on their website. This only lasts roughly about one hour on the full brightness, which is about there. So I won't shine directly into the camera, but um, that's the full brightness. So one hour, which is okay. Um, you just have to make sure that you either buy spare batteries or that you are charging it um, when you're not using it. This came in actually very useful. So it kind of, I kind of used it in a way that wasn't very conventional in a way that use a flashlight. So hopefully I can uh, show a picture of it um, now, but essentially I use this torchlight as essentially a, a, a light for a kitchen area. So um, I essentially, the place that we stayed in um, had this kind of gazebo hut barbecue area, but it didn't have any light source, um, unfortunately. So there was no lights there. You kind of had to use your own headlamps and everything. So I whipped out this torch um, thinking, okay, this is gonna be pretty cool. And then I was like, how do I make this stand up, you know, bounce it off the ceiling, you know? But then uh, a good friend of mine, you know, thought of the great idea of sticking this into the scotch towel, uh, um, uh, roll, which you can hopefully see a picture of here. Um, and essentially that really brightened up everything and you know, we were able to see what we were cooking, we were able to see what we were eating. And so that was amazing. Um, definitely one use for this, which I didn't initially think of. The second thing um, which uh, I, I realized that I, I was kind of misled on. So you can see here on the packaging, um, it says that, you know, it maintains, it has brightness stabilization. So it's kind of like full 100% 
and then it dies immediately. There's no fall off. I found that that was a little misleading because that didn't, that wasn't what happened. So it was at full brightness and then um, when the battery started getting low, it would kick back to the one below that and then the one below that and then the one below that. So it wasn't that it was 100% full brightness and then it cut. It was trying to regulate its own power by dropping down um, each step. So in a way, I do see that as a natural fall off, although it's not you know, between the two power stations, like it was a direct drop, but you know, the fact that it didn't just go full all the way and then cut immediately. So um, I don't think it was an overheating issue. Um, it was just the fact that, yeah, it was running low on battery and it decided to do that instead of full cut, which was a little bit misleading. I think it's still a good uh, torchlight. $100 uh, US gets you this flashlight. If you do want a, a decent uh, high power torch, this is great, great build. Um, Battery life is decent, full brightness, one hour. Um, it was definitely, you know, great to use in the pitch black and, and stuff like that. So um, I haven't reviewed many other torches, but I can say that I am quite happy with this. I'll be using this and I'll be keeping this uh, for sure when I go camping trips and all that stuff. So again, this is the Predator Pro by uh, Army Tech. Um, but, and yeah, I'll leave links in the descriptions below if you want to go get one of these uh, for yourself. Now, but that's it for this video. Uh, like it if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or any comments about this particular product or if you, you know, let me know if you like this. Uh, was it, do you think there are much better flashlights out there for the same price? Um, you know, um, do you think this is really worth it? Let me know in the comments and um, yeah, subscribe to see more videos like this in the future and I will see you guys in the next one.